Greetings. I'm starting a third watch project. It's a Desky watch, D-E-S-K-Y. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, with an A-Shield 1700 automatic movement. The Aloga company, E-L-O-G-A, another company name, I hope I'm pronouncing correctly, started the Desky brand in 1946. Uh, Fortis purchased Aloga in 1969. Anyway, I started disassembly yesterday, and during disassembly, a screw head snapped off its body. So now a screw body is embedded in the screw hole. And I have to get the body out of the hole before I can think about replacing the screw. I've got a few choices. Choice number one is to dip the plate in sulfuric acid to eat the screw body. Uh, I read about this online, and I'm not interested in trying this. You know, e even I have my limits. Uh, I'm dealing with sulfuric acid, no. Second choice, uh, soak the plate in alum. Uh, I got this suggestion from a user in the ChronoGlide forum. Uh, the alum will dissolve the steel, but not the aluminum base plate. And it's not caustic like sulfuric acid, so that's good. Uh, you better be certain if you use this technique that there's no other steel on the plate or else you're going to get a nasty surprise. Third choice is to use a staking set. Uh, the idea is to use a stump and a stake, uh, or an inverted stake and a stake, with diameters that are smaller than the screw body. You clamp the body between them and then with your hand turn the plate clockwise or counterclockwise depending upon how you have the plate mounted to unscrew the body from the plate. This is using the staking set as a screw extractor tool. And I see the logic behind it, and normally I'm kind of in favor of using the staking set whenever possible, but I am uneasy about whether this, whether this could damage the stake tips, and I don't want to find out. Um, there's another choice, which is Kendrick and Davis sold screw knocking punches, and I'm sure other uh, staking ma ma kit manufacturers did too. And the screw knocking punches are for driving out the screw body with force, right? You put the stake down, you whack it with a hammer, and it forces the screw body out of the hole. In fact, I have two of them in my Kendrick and Davis 18R kit. Uh, the problem here is that using them could easily be traumatic to the plate. Uh, a final choice is to use a screw extractor, a tool designed for extracting screws. Near as I can tell, the one to get is the Bergeon 30209. And if you're lucky, the 30209C driving pins that come with the 30209 will do the job. Uh, if you're not lucky, you're going to also have to buy an additional driving pin set to get the job done. This tool, the 30209, is about $140 plus shipping and tax. Maybe you can find it a little cheaper somewhere. Maybe Bergeon will have it on sale or Bergeon's vendors will have it on sale. You can buy used versions of this tool, but the used ones are often older vintages and they, they may work still work fine, but they're not going to be uh, the newest version of this, of this uh, Struix extractor. As I contemplated which path to take, a thought occurred to me. I wondered if I could just use the screw head to unscrew the screw body. So if you think about it, you've got the screw body and the screw head and the head came off the body. If it's a clean shear, then there's no way for the head to move the body. But if there's jagginess that match corresponding roughness in the screw body and you put the head back on the body exactly where it was before the break occurred, you could, by pressing down on the head, maybe unscrew the screw body. That's the thought I had. So let me show you how it went. So this is looking down on the screw body still in the plate at 45x magnification. Uh, you can see the top of the screw body where the head used to be attached. The big area in the middle is a chunk of the head that um, was left on the body. To the left of that big chunk, if you look closely, you can see sort of a, a slice off to the left. And then on the right side, if you look closely, you can see a difference in the top and the bottom corners. And so this is what the head has to fit on top of to have a chance of unscrewing the body. And the question is, what orientation should the head have? 
Well, this is the underside of the screw head lying under my microscope uh, at 45x magnification. And you can locate the inverse of all of the artifacts from the top of the screw body under this head. And they are the inverse. In fact, they are inverse and upside down from the screw body. So if I were to take the head as it's oriented now under the scope and flip it top to bottom, it would be in the correct orientation to mate to the respective defects on the top of the screw body. And so that's what we're going to do. So here's zooming out the plate and the screw head that you just saw up close. And you can also see how dirty this movement was when I got it. So here come my tweezers, my brass tweezers. And I'm gonna just kind of shuffle things around a little bit, just to make a little bit more room for my tweezer tips. And I'm gonna take the head and I'm gonna flip it top to bottom and then move it into position. And so I carefully do that. And so I place it. So now the head, if I just take it as is in that orientation and move it on top of the body, the defects will line up with the defects in the other component, so half of the component. So now I'm going to grab the head and put it on. Uh, uh. And I, I could just show you it being done nice and neat, but I'm just going to show you goof ups and all. So now I'm just very careful. I don't want to have to go back and go through this whole exercise again, so I don't want to lose the orientation. I want to, you know, go slow and make sure I don't confuse myself. So, yep, and I flip it around. I admit it. I admit it. A little sloppy here. And I come back and boom, it's on top of the body. And now I'm going to try to unscrew the body from the plate. So now I've moved the parts over to my workbench and here comes the screwdriver and I'm pressed down and I nearly lose it, but I don't. And I start to unscrew. Pushing down, pushing down, pushing down and uh, there we go. That's the head and there's the body and it's just sticking out a little bit and I go to pick it up and I place it alongside the head. And there you have it. The body's out of the plate. Success. And that's all I have for you today.